Welcome to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hard-working farmers. We want to share their success stories. And where there are challenges, we will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields. And increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms. On Munda Makeover! Hey, Katanana. Yes, Cozzy. I got myself some peanut butter. What are you going to get? I'm going to get myself some groundnuts. How much was that peanut butter, though? 25 kwacha. Hmm, I believe my groundnuts are going to be so much cheaper. Ah, cheaper, but uh, will it be better quality? Let's go find out from the farmers that we are going to meet today. Indeed, Katanana. Mm. Today, we're going to learn a lot more from our farmers. Let's go meet them. This one is a rotten potato! Today we're in 10 miles, central province. And we are visiting two farmers who are part of a group. We want to find out how working in a group has helped them. They are both members of a farmer's group where they get training and information on how to better their yields. So let's go and find out what they're up to. How are you? Fine, yeah, how are you? We're well, very well, thank you. you are My name welcome. is Koziani. And I'm Kachanana. We're happy to meet you. Who are you? We are Tuswangane Area Women's Association. Ah, Tuswangane. Yes. What does that mean? It Can means you... working together. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. nice. It's a group of women only. Okay. Yes, we are about 120. Wow. Why did you join this group, ladies? So that it is they improve cost of living mm -hmm. That's why we joined this group as the Swangane Area Women's Association. So I used to work on my own, but it was a real struggle. Working alone is not easy. That's how come I joined the Swangane Cooperative. So now we work together in Tuswangane. Well, from what I can see here, mm. we're going to learn a lot from these ladies today, Kachanana. Yes, you're very right. But ladies, I would like to know, surely you're facing some challenges mm. with this. At the moment, we, are, we don't have the technical advice. Mm. Mm. That one is lacking. The other challenge that we have okay. is the value addition. Mm. We grow groundnuts. Mm. Mm. We don't know how to make peanut butter. Not even a machine that can process the peanut butter. Mm. It's also good at the market. Yeah. Then also we grow soya beans. Mm -hmm. We are not able to process the soya beans that we grow to make it into cooking oil. Yes. So if we can have somebody who can train us in value addition, mm. intensive training, right. then we shall really appreciate. Well, I think we may have the experts who can definitely help with finding solutions to these challenges. So we're going to go, speak to our experts, and we'll come back with the help that you need. Exactly. We are going to Swangana when we come back. Thank you so much. <laughs> when I heard that the Munda Makeover team was coming to my farm, I was very happy. I was very anxious for their arrival. Now that they are here, I am very happy. Finding good market and good prices for farm produce can be challenging. So, what can farmers do to help manage post-harvest losses and be more competitive in the market? I've called on Sipiwe Hanninger from Better World Innovations to help our farmers learn more. What do you farm on uh, this property of yours? We grow maize, mm -hmm. we grow soya beans, we grow cucumbers and groundnuts. Wow. Where do you sell your produce? 
Mm. We have a market at Mandevu, that's okay. where we sell our products. What do you do with your remaining produce? Mm. We preserve using our old methods, traditional mm -hmm. methods of preservation. Mm -hmm. That's what we use, although part of it, it just goes to waste. Right. Yes. And also for home consumption. Ah. Yes. So, Sipiwe, when it comes to finding markets, what advice do you have for an amazing group of farmers here today? You know, marketing is, 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 is a skill. I would say. So it's not easy for every one of us to go to the market and just sell off everything that you have. Indeed. There's a lot of competition out there and it's quite a struggle. Oh, yeah. But then the good news is, as Better World Innovations, our platform, that's our, our Harvest Eye App uh, mm -hmm. platform, is open for farmers like this, where mm -hmm. they can bring their produce uh, and then we are able to sell for them to other people. So it might not only be Zambian uh, mm -hmm. buyers. Zambia is a land-linked country, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of buyers out there that are always waiting for the harvest period. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, our farmers can use our platform to sell their produce mm -hmm. in a smart way. So we've spoken a bit about our markets. What is value addition? Adding value to what you already have. You know, mm -hmm. integrating it to a next level that is going to g give you more than the raw product is actually giving you. Okay. So if you're adding value to something, you're adding the costs of, of that product as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Each product that these farmers are, are growing has some value that can be added to it. And the more value you add to it, the more money in your pocket. You can add value to the garnets by making it powdered garnets. You can add value to it by blending it into peanut butter, mm -hmm. which is a very nutritious um, kind of butter. And then the, you can also use it as a snack. So this is actually not roasted garnets, but rather fried garnets. So if you look at the value of these garnets, they, they look really, they're not so much. Huh? So I don't know how, how much do you sell a medal of garnets? We do sell at 80 kwacha. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the shelled one? Yes. And then the unshelled garnets? 20 kwacha meda. That's the, the beauty of value addition. Uh -huh. Makes sense? Let's break it down. Let's look at the importance of value addition. We have seen how by simply shelling your groundnuts, you can make a larger profit. So what if you did more? Let's take the example of the packet of fried groundnuts produced from one meda. One meda of fried groundnuts will give you 30 to 40 packets. Each packet can sell for between 5 to 10 kwacha, meaning you can make up to 400 kwacha. This is five times more, all because of value addition. The major importance of value addition is to sustain the farmer, increase household income. This is beautiful information that we're gaining here. Can I do these things in my home? Of, of course you can. Uh, my ladies here are going to agree with me that we can easily get this powder from home using a pounding mortar that is every household has one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we can also uh, get these from home, because it's just a matter of soaking the granites in water, removing the covers, and then you're able to fry these. Mm -hmm. And then every household is able to produce such a pack. Okay. So what value do we gain when the ladies are working together? Together you are able to achieve more that, that, than you can achieve if you're alone. Right. So as a cooperative, the same way that uh, you've, you have managed to achieve a hammer mill, mm. you have this greenhouse here, it's the same way that you can work together and come up with um, funds to fund a, a, a peanut butter making machine. Following our experts' advice, there are processes that you can carry out yourself to get your produce to have a longer shelf life and sell for a better price. Looking at the times that we're living in, there's been a lot of changes due to climate change. So imagine a situation where we wake up one day, we're waiting for the rains and they never come. What happens next? We have hunger striking our homes, and yeah. then it's the women's to carry that burden. So in a case where the rains are bad, you have a drought spell, this is going to come in. This will mitigate the, 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 the risks and other stresses that come along with climate change. Absolutely. So you're able to still sell your produce and live on and move on till the next rains come, and then you have another bumper harvest. Value addition on your produce, enabling you to get a better income 
and increase your shelf life in these unpredictable times. I've learned, I've learned a lot through Spiway and through Better World Innovations. The, the benefit I gained from cooperative because two are better than one. We share ideas through our cooperatives. Climate change has brought about several challenges. Farmers have to find ways to cope with unpredictable weather patterns as the seasons change. Let's find out some of the solutions. For the upcoming season, Grace is looking to grow soya beans and will need help on how to ensure her crop is able to handle the effects of climate change and give her a bumper harvest. Let's visit her farm with Sipiwe Haninga from Better World Innovations. Well, Grace, what are some of the weather changes that affect you as a farmer? We usually grow our own crops like maize, but irregular rainfall reduces yield. They don't grow well without water. Mm. Speedway, how has climate change affected farmers in this region? Most farmers would plant on good time, good seed, and then the rains go. There's a dry spell, and then the plants dry out. And then once the rains are back, mm. the plants don't start growing from where they were left off from. Mm. As a result, most farmers just lose out on uh, input costs mm. and it really affects their yield. That's a lot of damage. Can you tell us, are there any solutions that they can use to mitigate these problems? These are climate smart solutions mm -hmm. where farmers like Grace can take up uh, seed varieties that are drought resilient and mm -hmm. also early maturing. Mm -hmm. In a case where the rains go for let's say two weeks to three weeks, a drought resilient seed mm -hmm. uh, variety will still thrive through the dry spell. Ah. And once the rains are back, it will start off from where it ended and the crop would have matured and the farmer is able to get at least something out of their field compared to a farmer that just uses a regular seed variety. Do you use drought uh, resistant seed? Have you ever tried these seeds? Uh -uh. So Spiwe, where can a farmer find certified seed and how can they identify that this is indeed certified seed? Uh -huh. So for our farmers, we've made it very easy. There are few seeds, uh, there are actually a number of seeds from soya bean seed, groundnut seed and other maize seeds uh -huh. and other crop seeds as well uh -huh. that are certified in drought uh, resilient yes. that we've supplied to agro dealers close to our farmers mm -hmm. so if the farmer is not sure we've also made the names and also the f uh, photos of those seeds available on the ah. app where they can go and check out what what seed they're going to buy once they get to an agro shop they are able to identify to say okay this is the seed i'm looking for okay Speedway, when and how can we plant these seeds okay so um mm. the right time to plant is mid uh, November to mm. late December. Mm. Anywhere around that time would be appropriate for a farmer to plant their seed varieties. Right. So, for soya beans, how do you plant soya bean? Do you use the same methods as when you're planting your maize, or is there any other method? Uh -uh. No. However, before we plant the seed, we add chemicals to them. In the event we can't access the chemicals, we soak them in sugar instead. Adding sugar to your soya beans before planting. Mm. So I think the right way to, to do it is actually by inoculum. So inoculum is only at 28 kwacha per 250 gram. Mm. So that 250 gram is enough to, to mix in uh, 50 kg of seed. Mm. So if you use inoculum, which is a chemical that is going to help you supply nitrogen to your soya beans, and then you also use a plant catalyst that is going to quicken your germination, and then you're using an early maturing seed variety, which is drought resilient. It's going to mature in good time, have good weight, have all the nutrients. Make sense? Let's break it down. Drought resilient seeds help farmers meet the challenges of climate change through their early maturing. This means that when rainfall is scarce, the seed is able to survive during dry spells. Farmers can access drought resilient seeds from agro dealers' stores. Well, Spiwe, thank you so much for coming and sharing your information with us. Thank you so much, Chris, for having us here. We're really glad that we came. Thank you very much. So, there you go. Climate Smart Seed Variety, a solution to climate change, securing your harvest and your family's nutrition.
We're in Central Province and we're visiting Grace and Mapiwe. We've seen how certified Climate Smart Seed variety can help farmers adapt to climate change. And how value addition can improve shelf life and improve market value for your produce. Now we want to look at how the right fertilizers can help improve your crop. And how to improve your farming through financial literacy. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome people, welcome. I've called on Sipiwe Haninga from Better World Innovations to help Mapiwe get an understanding of record keeping and financial literacy. What is financial literacy? Okay, so basically for a farmer, financial mm. literacy is uh, the know-how of managing your finances as a farmer, your expenses, your income, and your savings. Mama Piwe, how are you managing your finances, especially when it comes to your farm? Hmm. I have a challenge in managing. Mm. Sometimes mm. And the, expen the, the, the expenditure can be more, then you, maybe you get into loss. The income is less? It's less, yes. Ah, okay. Do you keep any records uh, to see how and where you've missed it all? No, I just put my records in my head. Mm. <laughs> so Spillway, you have to tell us what are the activities that we need to conduct when it comes to financial literacy as uh, pertaining to farming. Farming is a business. Mm. So if you're doing farming uh, as a business, you need to keep records as a farmer for you to know uh, if you're doing well or you, or you have to improve in certain areas. Mm. So for you to keep records in your head, uh, I don't know if you, you've, you've managed to keep all the records for all the farming seasons. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so keeping record is very important as mm. a farmer because it, it helps you uh, regulate what you should do and what you should not do in the coming season and also helps you in proper preparation. How do you go about starting this whole uh, financial management process when it comes to her farm? What's the first thing that she needs to do? Okay, so uh, to start with, she has to identify how much land she's going to be using for her farming season. Okay. Yes, by, uh, by knowing how much land you are going to use, mm. it will also give you at least an estimated amount of money that you need to invest on that piece of land. If the most important uh, farm inputs that you need, you list them down and just list how much that would cost you. So let's go step by step. The land, the land, size of the land, the size the of the land. The second one is? Uh, the cost of production for okay. that particular uh, crop that she wants to do that season and yeah. cost of production would include what so cost of, of production would include seed equipments and mm. labor okay yes all those things she has to write down in her records book mm -hmm. okay okay so once that is done mm -hmm. then now you are good to go financial planning allows you the farmer to be able to invest your money according to your needs this allows you to project on the activities that you will be carrying out in the upcoming farming season and also helps you have a true record of your profit and loss. So, don't keep it in your head. Write it down. A record book will help keep track of the money you spend on your munda and how you spend it. On the left side here, write down all the income you get. On the right side, fill in your expenses. Add up the total money made and money spent. At the end of the season, subtract expenses from income. This will show you your profit or loss. Wow, Sipiwe, I think you've given us so much helpful information. Isn't that right? Exactly. I have to budget first mm. before I do something. So you are ready to get your budget on, keeping your records for each and everything that you do on the farm? I'm very much ready. And that's what it is about financial literacy. It's going to make your planning, your saving, and everything about your agribusiness true. For our next story, I want to share with Grace something that will enable her to increase her yield by strengthening her crop. Now, uh, the tomato is not doing so well. Because of fertilizer. Exactly, mm. and uh, I saw someone who's growing the tomato very well because of the fertilizer they're using, and uh, I think you should have a look. Earlier, I met with a farmer who is growing tomatoes. Divine from Yara was there to help us learn how their fertilizer ensures a farmer's crop grows healthy and strong throughout the season. So, Mr. Stanley. Yes, sir. Quite a very, very well prepared field here. 
and Thank plants you. are already going in the ground. Is it your first time planting and uh, growing tomato? No, it's not my first time. Mm -hmm. I've been growing tomatoes for the past two years. Ah, fantastic. So I can learn one or two things about growing tomato from you. I think so. Okay, so now I see something that could be of uh, great <laughs> use here. And I think your tomatoes love to eat it as well. Yes. So what's in the bag? This is a product we're calling, or a solution, should I say, that we'll call Yara Mila Luna. It's a high NPK fertilizer. NPK being nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and it, was, it has also got some sulfur and magnesium. Okay. So how do we use this particular solution in our tomato field? So uh, this solution, you're using it as a, a base of fertilizer. Okay. So you are applying it in the ground mm -hmm. before or after planting. How would you really recommend it is used in the best way? Just after land prepa prepa preparation, you would have applied your pre-plant. Right. Then you do a light irrigation, maybe for three or four days. Right. Then you come and plant. Okay. Then at the day when you are planting, then you also apply the other dose right. of, of the planting fertilizer. I see. Yes. Okay. So the most important question I think that we're all curious to know, what are the real benefits and advantages of using Yara Miller Luna? Number one, it's high NPK. Hmm. So you're getting that high phosphorus in already mm -hmm. as uh, you, 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 when, you, when you've transplanted exactly. for that root development. Mm -hmm. And not only high phosphorus, you're also getting a dose of startup nitrogen. Right. You're also getting some potassium in there and right. sulfur and magnesium of which the whole package will give you that balanced nutrition. Fantastic. Divine, I think it's time for you to show us how to apply this so we can see it in action. Let's go on. Okay. Mr. Stanley, please lead the way. All right. I'll help you there. Thanks. So we're going to be applying uh, 10 grams per plant species. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Five centimeters away from the plant because okay. you don't want to scorch your plant. So just make sure that it's in the hole okay. and uh, you bury it. And that was a simple demonstration of how you apply your Yara Mila Luna. Hmm, I see it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Following our experts' advice, make sure that the ground is well prepared in advance for the transplanting of your tomato seedlings with proper land preparation. Be sure to create spacing of 5 cm between your seedling and fertilizer. Apply the recommended amount of 10 grams of fertilizer per seedling. You can use a bottle cap as your measuring cup. With these steps, you will be sure to have a bumper harvest. Katanana, hey. am I doing it the right way? I it's think I finally wine. caught your dance moves. Why? 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 I'm not so sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolutely amazing day, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would. And Mapiwe, how did you feel about our visit to your farm? I'm very, very excited. As you come next year, mm -hmm. you'll find a bumper harvest. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and how do you feel about our visit? It's been a wonderful day. I think just be here tomorrow again and the day after and the day after. It's good. <laughs> all that's left is dance moves, uh -huh. yes. Well, but that's all we have time for this mm. week. We'll see you next week on another episode of Moon Down Mako!